sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am not He is my comfort. Clap those hands for those that are watching and viewing us as we have already went live. Let's celebrate the God we serve and God bless you. Praise team. Isn't God just simply amazing and awesome? Worthy is the Lamb. Come on, let's bless God all over this house, this place. And for those that are watching us live, we celebrate the God whom we serve, a risen King. And a resurrected Savior. Lift those hands all over this place. All over this place. Those of you with us, let's touch and agree. Let's touch and agree. Father, we thank you and yet we honor you. We ask that your will be done. Your purpose and yet your assignment be fulfilled. Let every word be your words. That will transform all of our lives. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth thee. Speak to your vessels. That we may be transformed in miraculous change. And we don't have to wait to see you to do it to glorify you. You're God alone. Let's bless God. Oh, come on. That was church clapping. I said that was church clapping. <laughs> I need kingdom dwellers. Those that believe they've been summoned by heaven. And God is calling us to a place that's greater than where we've been. Woo. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. For the next 30 seconds, I feel something in the atmosphere. Yeah. Something is moving. Something is changing. God is doing a new thing in the earth. For the former things are passed away. And behold, all things are new. Woo. The reason the old don't work for you anymore because ain't nothing old about you. God is doing a new thing in your life. And every time you try to be your old self, it just don't work. I said it just don't work. Ooh. And you can't go back to being old when God have already did a new thing. Ooh. All right. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you. Listen, for those that have your Bible real, real, real closely, let's look at this assignment. I'm excited about what the Lord is saying, what he has said, and what he's already done. Amen. Past, present, and future. Just a little bit down, just a little bit. Uh, Acts chapter number three, the New Testament. Acts chapter number three. Acts chapter number three, the Amplified Translation. Um uh, I understand my assignment today is not to, so much to be exegetical, homiletically sound today as it is to, to be an encourager and a lifter in exhortation to the believers and the saints. So, so if, if today we may sound a little churchy for those that are watching us, maybe for the first time or whatever, it is because we're not ashamed. <laughs> okay, and we're not praising them just because we want to. We praise him because we was created to praise him. And I don't know, I don't know about you, but God's been too good to me. And I can't afford not to praise. So, so this assignment is to exhort the believers and the saints of the most high God. All right. So those that will turn with us to Acts chapter number three, beginning at verse number one, uh, the Amplified Translation says this. Now, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour prayer, the ninth hour, 3 p.m. And a man who had been unable to walk from birth uh, was being carried along, whom they used to set down every day at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, so that they could be begging alms from these or those entering into the temple. So when they saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he began asking them for coins, money. 
But Peter, along with John, stared at him intently and said, look at us. And the man began to pay attention to them, eagerly expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you in the name, the authority, the power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth begin now to walk and go on walking begin now to walk and go on walking verse number seven says then he seized the man by the right hand with a firm grip and raised him up and at once his feet and ankle became strong and steady two more verses and when he leaped he stood up and began to walk and with a leap, he stood up and began to walk. And with a leap, he stood up and began to walk. Mm -hmm. He leaped before he stood. All right. Mm -hmm. And he went into the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And he went into the temple with them. Up until this time, historically, by the divine of the law, nobody dysfunctional or have any deformities could go inside the church. But this man, for the first time in his life, went to church. But before he got in the church, he was already praising God. Oh, God. I pray as I pause in a sailor moment. I, I, I hope and I pray you didn't wait to get here to start praising. I pray you leaped up out of the bed and jumped up this morning and had. Okay. All right. All right. All right. We got to. We got. We 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 got to go. Let me. Let me read. Let me. Let me read. Let me read. Let me read. Let me read. Uh, yeah. 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 All right. All right. Uh. Verse, verse, verse number nine, verse number nine. These are the people, these are the people inside the temple. They, these are the people inside the church. Uh, and, and, and the people saw him walking and praising God. And they recognized him as the very man who usually sat begging for coins at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement and were mystified at what had happened to him. Uh, now, I want you to go back to verse 8. If not, I won't be able to finish this message of an assignment. Uh, it's going to be too much exhortation taking place if I, if I pause anymore. Uh, verse number 8 says this. Pay very close attention to the reading. It says, and with a leap, he stood up and began to walk. And he went into the temple with them walking and leaping and praising God. I want to talk about, for those that's taking notes, I want you to put down, I want to talk about a step back praise. All right. All right. Go ahead and write that down. Yeah, I'm going to talk about a step back praise. And uh, uh, I, 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 uh, again, I understand that this, my assignment is to lift the saints, the believers of God, that, that 2020 have been so crazy through, through, through the midst of pandemic coronavirus through the midst of epidemics and craziness and all the stuff around you I, I believe the Holy Spirit have left me or led me here to lead the people of God to say just take a step back praise and remember where God have brought you from Oh God, I, I, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna try to behave myself Be, because a step back praise. When the Spirit of the Lord began to minister this to me several, several days ago, he, he says, he says, take take a moment to reflect that this is not the first time that you ever been through something, and it won't be the last. This is not the first time. You've ever been sick. This ain't the first time some of you have ever been unemployed. This ain't the first time 
you had money problems. But I'm here on a divine assignment to remind you in this step back praise assignment, if it had not been for the Lord that was on your side, where would you be? When I look back over my life and I think things over, I could surely say I'm a testimony. I could have been. You could have been. Dead and gone. But I got to step back and thank God for how far he brought me. How far he brought you. I got to step back and remember God been good to us. Oh, can y'all take 30 seconds and just step back and give God a Shabbat prayer? Okay. Uh, you got about 25 more seconds so I can move on. Whew. Watch this. Watch this. I, 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 I promise you, I won't be long before you. But I want to talk about three types of step back praise. For those that want to take notes, if you can do it today, you may just have to uh, watch this a couple of times live or order the CD, DVD, because it may be hard to keep up with the notes today. Because I got a crazy feeling. I got a crazy expectation. My spirit is crazy up in here. Said I wasn't going to tap nobody. But I, ooh, how good God been to me. All right, all right, the first one. The first one. Every once in a while, we got to shake ourselves and get over the frustration and the stress and the anxiety and aggravation and all the seriousness and remember. Ain't nobody God but God. Okay, okay, here we go. The first thing. The first thing. Ooh, you may be hearing me say, excuse me, a whole lot in this service. Because I may have to pause for the cause. And if you don't have nothing to praise the mother, you may have to excuse me if I put my mic down. So I can pick him up and Okay, okay, okay. Yes, Lord. Yes, 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 Lord. Okay, all right, the first one. Woo, all right. All right. Wow. Something incredible is about to happen. Woo. All right, let, let's move. Let me give you the first one. All right. Thank you, Lord. All right, the first one, the first one, write this down. The first type of step back praise is called testimonial and praise report. What, what, what is a testimonial and praise report has to do with a step back praise? I, I, see, the first thing I want to help remind you the simplicity of what is a, a testimony. A, a testimony's root word means test. And the reason you can testify is it because the test you've experienced in a season that makes you God's eyewitness. That you swear under oath to the heavens and God. And you witness to people. I was disqualified. Not worthy to be qualified. 
until God put me through something that I was not qualified to know how to overcome. But my testimony is, and the Bible says, John chapter 9, there was a blind man that was born blind. And this blind man, Jesus walked upon him. And he got mud, huh? wiped it in his eyes. Huh? When he wiped it in the man's eyes, huh? he said, now go to the pool of Siloam huh? and wash. Huh? See, the testimony huh? is of the disqualification huh? that Jesus would tell huh? a blind man huh? that was born blind huh? to go somewhere huh? that he couldn't see. Huh? See, your testimony is huh? you did not see huh? how you was going to come out of this. You was blind, but thank God for blind faith. I can't see how I'm coming out of this, but all I know, I heard Jesus give me a word of instruction, and he said, go. The Bible says, as the man went, he was healed from blindness, and the testimony is when people that have always saw you struggling, they've always saw you down in the house, and they walk upon you, and they say to you, excuse me, for the first time, uh, excuse me, uh, oh shoot. Here's the, here's the testimony that they will walk up to him, a blind man, and ask the blind man, How do you see? They knew from the beginning this man never had vision. But they came up to the blind man and said, now how are you able to see? And the man testified, Jesus, Jesus did it. Do I have any witness uh, that is here uh, and is watching us live uh, that there's some things uh, we've been through uh, that we can't explain uh, how we got over. Uh, but all we can tell, uh, all we can tell them, uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus did it. Uh, who healed you? Uh, Jesus, uh, who delivered you? Uh, Jesus, uh, who got you back up? Uh, Jesus, uh, who gave you that job? Uh, Jesus, uh, who paid your rent uh, when you didn't have no money? Uh, your insurance collapsed. Uh, your body was ill. And Jesus, uh, somewhere, uh, somehow, uh, when nobody else uh, could help her, she Ooh, excuse me for the second time. The Bible says in chapter 17 in the gospel of Luke there was 10 leopards that cried out to Jesus and they said Lord will you heal us? And Jesus looked around uh, and examined them uh, and put them to the test. Uh, he said, go show yourself uh, to the priest uh, and then uh, go back and give a report. Uh, testimony, uh, praise report. Uh, the Bible said, that's a step back praise right there. Uh, the Bible said, as they went, they were all healed uh, and cleansed. Uh, of their leprosy and the Bible says that only one out of ten came back with a testimonial praise report Jesus said where they're not ten of y'all and you're the only one that came back to give me praise that's what I love about it Take a step back uh, and remember uh, before I tell uh, everybody else uh, how I got blessed. Uh, let me take a step back uh, and remind uh, the Lord uh, if it had not been for the Lord. Ooh, who am I helping? Now can we take it deeper? Write this thought down. Because testimony
testimonial praise report from a legalistic terminology. It means it is my resume and my reference that qualifies me for what I was disqualified for to now be elevated and promoted by God because I was not ashamed to tell the world that God did this. Let me bless you. Let me bless you. Let me bless you. The Bible says in 1 Samuel, Old Testament, chapter number 17, it says David gave his resume and cross reference report to the king. When it was time to fight Goliath, and trouble stood in the kingdom. The Bible says David was the only one that was willing to present his resume and his reference when the king said, you're not qualified to fight Goliath. you just a little young teenager. You can't stand up to this champion. The Bible said David flipped out his resume and cross reference presented it to the king he says king here's what's on my resume I am one of my father's seven sons and in the seventh son I am the youngest and I keep my father's I tend to his sheep but one day out of many days there was bears and there was lions that often time show up to fight and to kill my father's sheep but here's my resume and every time that bear outweighed me that lion outweighed me but it did not weigh my God I would snatch the sheep out of the mouth of the bear and the lion and every once in a while the bear and the lion they got angry and they tried to come kill me but God anointed me and gave me supernatural ability supernatural an anointing to do something I would have never done if God hadn't applied can I get somebody to let out another shot? Watch. Watch the reference. He referenced what he's been and what God have allowed him to do to what now God is anointing him in this season to do public. Can I prophetically speak now? Many of you that are viewing, watching, and that are here, this is your prophetic season to watch the manifestation of God. What you was privately doing that nobody really understood and understand the value of the anointing and the faith that's on your life. You've been working uh, behind the scenes. Uh, you've been doing things uh, without trying to get recognition. Uh, but you've been doing it uh, because God uh, hands on your life. Uh, and even when uh, it looks like uh, you've been devalued, uh, it looks like uh, you unappreciated, uh, it looks like uh, folks don't care. I want you to know, uh, take a step back and praise God because God have created you a resume and a reference because this season what you were doing privately God's about to now favor you publicly and if you're not too ashamed can you just praise God in spite of where you are right now
That is for the believer that believe he's going to do it. Here, here, here's the cross reference. Here's the cross reference. Nobody would take the job but David. Nobody else gave King Saul the rest of them. For those that I'm speaking to now, you've been doing things nobody else wanted to do. Because they thought it was beneath them. So they call you a puppet. They call you a nobody, a flunk. They call you a kiss up. But they don't know you've been blowing up kisses. That's why you're like David. You can praise him privately. That's why you're like David. You know how to worship when things are bad. Because you didn't have to get around a bunch of church folks to know how to pray. You know how to praise him when the lights go off. You know how to praise him when the car tells. You know how to praise him when the government cut off your benefit, but God give you a new benefit. Ooh. Watch this. Watch this. Here we go. Here we go. Ooh. All right. The thing that nobody else wanted to do because it didn't bring attention to themselves. It brought attention to somebody else. Those are the ones God is elevating. That are not looking for self gratification. They're looking to God to give them glory. And God going to give you glorification. Nobody turned in a resume out of the whole kingdom and Saul being king. Nobody turned in a resume. And King Saul looked around and realized this is all we got to work with, David. You'll know when it's your season to do something great in the kingdom. You failed at everything until that point. When you couldn't get nothing else right, you couldn't fail at getting that one right. I need somebody to holler back. You might have gotten 90 things wrong or 99 things out of 100, but that one thing David said, this one thing I got confidence in that I will behold the beauty of the Lord. As I inquire in his temple. Here we go. He gets the job. On what the king think is technicality. Which means. To the king. And the people. He didn't look qualified. But what qualifies you is. You too anointed to quit. Who did I just help? What 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 does it mean you two and other to quit? When you get to the place you try to talk yourself out too many times quitting. Ooh. Is there anybody like me? Every day I try to find myself. And soon as I try to turn in my letter of resignation to God, before I can get out of his presence. He remind me this is the only thing Tommy, you can get right. And if you quit on this, you quit on everything else. Ooh, when nothing else will do. When nothing else will do. He, 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 he faces Goliath with five stones, but he only needs one rock. 
But the rock is not what's going to kill Goliath. The rock is going to knock him out. See, it's that one word. When you can't get nothing, that's right. It's that one word you hold to. That you believe God told you. Who am I preaching to right here? When you are confused about everything else he told you. It's that one word. We used to say, speak that word, Lord. Give me one word. When you study 1 Samuel 17. Now I know they preach and teach the stone kill Goliath. Now I got to have an exegetical moment. Let's abstract from the text. The Bible says when David goes out to face Goliath. Now Goliath talked to David like everybody else. You don't know when you really assigned to do something, when everybody trying to talk you out of it. Oh, shucks. Goliath said to David, is this the best King Saul has to stand up against me? And the Philistine, they have brought out to me a little dog that has his toys called a slingshot and rocks. What are you going to do with these little toys, little boy? Fighting the champion. What's the prophetic now? David said, you come to me with humiliation and words. But I come to you. In the name of my God. And I'm about to Billy Jack you. Yeah. Why you trying to humiliate me. How I look. I'm going to prophesy how you going to look after me. <laughs> he said. I'm going to take. This one stone. And I'm going to sink it in your forehead. And I'm going to put you down. But before you die, I'm going to take your sword. And I'm going to put my foot on your neck. And I'm going to take your sword while you looking up at me. Because right now, you like everybody else. Why you looking down on me? <laughs> but what you fail to understand, Goliath, you 10 foot tall. And I'm just 5'7". Huh? But this time huh, is going to be the first time huh, you're going to have to look up huh, at somebody huh, that you've been looking down on. Huh? I'm proper saying real good. Huh? See, there's some people huh, all your life, huh, they've been looking down on you. Huh? But in this season, huh, God's going to use you huh, for them same folks. Ooh, you better take a step back, praise. When Goliath falls on his back, read the text. David gets his sword and cut his head off with Goliath's sword. See, here's the key to testimonial praise report is while you praising him, you're still being tested. But the test is not about God preparing to disqualify you. The test is to remind us once we overcome the test, never forget who did it for us. Who can somebody shout, God did it. Now, let me go to the second. I'm running out of time. Let's get to the second. Y'all ready for this? The first step back praise is called what? Testimony of what? Praise report. The second one is called a step back praise called a step back dance. Okay. Okay, y'all ready for this? Now this is for the folks that ain't too cute. Let me show you something. Now, the Bible says this. Watch this. In 2 Samuel chapter 6, the Bible says for over 40 years, the kingdom of Jerusalem and the kingdom of 
our God. They had not had the ark of God in their presence. They was trying to serve God without being in his presence. So David, the same David that have overcome Goliath through testimonial praise report is reminded now to take a step back, praise, and go after the ark of God and bring it back. God help us right there. To Jerusalem. The Bible says that when he went out to get the ark of God, he made a fatal mistake. And that is to go with people that don't know how to stay in God's presence. That interferes with what God's divine will is. That the Bible says now the wrong person touched the ark of God because they're trying to roll God in on a new court. See, that's when you know you don't got too cute. That when you ain't ugly praising them no more. Woo. Oftentimes I say this, this particular revelation. See, that's why God will use a Leah and cause a beautiful Rachel to stay barren. These are two sisters that now are married to Jacob. But the Bible says that God hated Rachel. But he loved Leah. But Leah was cross-eyed. And she was not that pretty to look at. But the Bible says God kept helping her to have children. See, God will use people that don't try to be cute, boozy, and stuck up. That says it don't take all that. I can't do all that. That's just too much for me. They too loud for me. They just too caught up for me. They too emotional for me. Well, I can tell you ain't been through nothing. Because if you ever really been through something, you ain't got time to think about your makeup running. You ain't got time to hear a little cute little dance. When you really been through some stuff. You don't care who looking at you. You don't care what they think about you. You don't care what they saying. Why? Because if they really knew how you almost lost everything. If they really knew you almost had a breakdown. And you really did. But God snatched us back. Who am I talking to? When do you get a moment huh, to tell me I can't do this? Huh? You got to say, listen, huh, I don't have time to be cute with throwing my hands up. Huh? When you really, huh, really, 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 huh, really, really, huh, you reach so far down. Huh? You shout. Huh? You dance. Huh? You support God. Huh? You rock God. Huh? You Tahila God. Huh? You don't care. The Bible says David fell the first time because he did not take step back praise. Read on after he missed the ark of God for three months at Obed Eden House. David leads the entrance of praise and worship. The Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 6 every time they rolled the ark, carried the ark of God into the city of David, Jerusalem. After six steps, David would dance. Go put it up. And then offer sacrifice and offer. Which means they had went many miles. How do you praise God? After several hundred miles walking, and you telling me it don't take all that? 
Maybe that's why God didn't make you king over his kingdom. The Bible said after they take to every six steps. That means, man, we got a long way to go. When is the king going to stop dancing? Every step I take, every move I make, he'll be watching me. All right. Proverbs, excuse me, Psalms 37 says this. The steps of a righteous man is ordered by God, which means every six steps, David told. And dance and sow the seed. Maybe that's why the kingdom became so rich with kingdom minded people. They know how to praise and so. The reason your praise didn't work in the beginning, you praised them and didn't sow. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his court with praise. Thanksgiving comes before praise. It's what I'm willing to sow and what I believe makes me praise and because I believe it. I need somebody to holler back this kingdom, real kingdom. He danced so much after every step. He danced out of his clothes. Yeah. Yeah. So you'll know when you're really praising God, you're not trying to entertain and perform before people. Because David, every time he takes a piece of his garment off, he recognizes my title didn't get me. <laughs> he realized his position didn't get him here. He realized that his name didn't get him. He realized that his money didn't get him there. Because he didn't have nothing to begin with. But he realized every time I script, I'm praising and dancing before the Lord. Because I'm reminded when I wasn't nobody. When people said I couldn't. People said I should. People said I wouldn't, but God brought you through. So for the real praises, take a step back praise. And you need to remind yourself when you didn't have but one piece of clothes, that you didn't have to choose what you was going to wear. You had to turn around and you didn't know how you was going to pay your bills. You didn't even know if you was qualified to put away a layaway plan. And here you are now. Look what God has done for you. And you're going to sit there. Or you're going to watch me through the stream. Through your devices. As we go live streaming. And you forgot. You ain't got to be at church right now. But if you're in the living room. You need to stand up. Take a step back. Praise. Turn the TV off and praise God. Wherever you are in the house, wherever you are, from wherever you're watching, even if you're driving down the road, don't close your eyes, but you need to pull over, put it in park. Oh, God, help me right there. And tap the steering wheel. Ah!
And while you're pulled over in the parking lot on the side of the road, and they looking over at you, let the window down and just keep your head out the door and tell them Jesus did it. says that he danced until he got back fully in Jerusalem. And then his wife looking from the high place of the balcony said how undignified did the king look while he danced so recklessly undignified shamely before all those women, the king stopped. It must have been his fifth step. Because the sixth step, he has to stop. He looked at her and said, if you think how you saw me when I come this far, all the way to this far, that this was undignified. Watch me praise him now. Because I'll be even more undignified in this. Because when I think about where I came from, an alcoholic, drug addict, jacked up, messed up, broken, and nobody gave me a chance. Jesus did it. <laughs> and I'm going to praise him with every breath I take. Now watch. Give me seven minutes to think I'm out here. Watch Acts chapter 3. And then we'll get to the third one. Acts chapter 3 talks about that here is a crippled man that from the day he was born could never walk. That every day he had to be brought to the gate called Beautiful. When there was many other gates in the city that led to the temple he chose the least likely gate to feel he could be blessed but the bible says that on one occasion the apostle John and Peter were partnering up when they really should have went through another gate because of their importance in titleship so you'll know when you become arrogant, self-conceited, pious, pompous, self-righteous, full of yourself, is when you feel like you're too important to go around. That everybody got to go around you. That you can't humble yourself and come down. Because you haven't forgot where you come from. I feel the presence of the Lord. The Bible says, now here is Peter and John different from the rest of the people that's giving him what it is that he thinks that blesses his life. And that's money. So he shows up expecting to be blessed, not expecting to change. Now watch the revelation. The revelation is this. They spoke a word. Rather than help him stay in his condition. If you really want to help people, show them how to get up. Impart into them how to get up. And then you don't have to give them handouts. You can give them a hand up. Watch the prophetic. 
The prophetic word is silver and gold. Have I none? But such as I have, I will give to you. I will impart unto you in the name of Jesus. Get up. You'll know the blessing must not be working if you're being blessed and still in the same place. <laughs> Quit saying he's blessing you that much and you ain't got up. Was that too much? Impartation is when people can show you and empower you how to get up, not just how to be blessed. Now watch what happened. When he reaches out his right hand and they touch and agree, impartation now puts script in so, what's in someone else into somebody that didn't have it. Whew. It's called empowerment or empowerment. I would rather somebody empower me than give me some money. Because if you empower me, I get my own money. <laughs> watch what happened. Immediately. Now watch, watch the scripture here. He's at the gate called beautiful. Which is the Corinthian brass. Which is transparent. The glass is so transparent. It's so beautiful. You don't see rust and stain. It's more beautiful than all the other gates within the city. But it's the least likely the ones want to go through. It's really a gate for Gentiles and women. But the reality is, when you've been touched and spoken by God, you never see someone in gender, color, or creed. All you understand that God has an assignment on your life for you to touch them. The Bible says this. Romans 10, 14, 15. Say, how can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach unless they've been sent? Now watch verse 15 says this. Romans 10, 14, 15. It says, how beautiful are the feet of those that brings glad tidings. Now the man is at the gate called what? He's at the gate, right? Two apostles are set assigned vessels Go to the gate called what? Beautiful. How beautiful are the what? Feet. The man is crippled at his what? Feet. But the one that's assigned is assigned to bring something beautiful to help get him back on his feet. How many of y'all caught that? See, you got to understand, you are assigned by God to get people back on their feet. Because you're carrying something so beautiful that God has assigned you that even though they're in an ugly situation, you bring something beautiful called the gospel. The good news. Now Psalms 122 says something even more prophetic. It says, our feet shall enter into the gate. Prophetically, it's talking about those that were disqualified that could not go in the gates in the temple or a place they were disqualified. Some said that how beautiful that their feet going to enter into the gate. The man's feet got what? Healed. And what was looked at as ugly now qualified him when he was disqualified all his life. There's some things many of you been disqualified that God's going to qualify you in this season. So quit praying for money. Pray for empowerment. So watch this. When the man received impartation he gains what something he never had strength in his feet his broken foundation now becomes a solid rock the man have always depended upon a system of support a system of 
people, a system of religion, a system of government. But God that day canceled his assistance. Because God that day took him off the system. Because if God in this season where it looks like all your help being canceled, God is intentionally canceling it because he's going to put you on his system. And he's going to part his kingdom of strength, of empowerment of God. So what is the first thing the man do when somebody empowers him? He leaps. He blows my mind. Now, he didn't stand first. He didn't walk first. How do a sitting man that's been sitting all his life leap from the ground? Can I bless you again? Many of you in this city said, well, you thought you're going to have to take this step, this step, and this step just to get here. God said, it's because this is your season. I'm going to take you where you are, and I'm going to leap you over here all in one moment. I need somebody to holler. Somebody better leap. That's a quantum. What should have took you five years? You're about to do it in five hours. Can I get somebody to holler back? The man leaps first. Then he jumps second. Then he walks. And right before he gets in the church though, he takes a step back. Let me help you one more time. He leaped first. Then he jumped. Then he walked. And he almost got ready to go inside the church doors. He took a step back and started praising. That's a step back praise. Which means I am not waiting to go up in that church and praise him with all them folks that's been past me every day of my life. I'm going to praise them before I get in there. You better not wait to come to church so you can praise. You better praise them before you get around folks that you thought was praising. Okay, okay I got to get ready close. I got to give you the... He, he had to take a step back. Praise. Yeah. He had to take a step back. Praise. Yeah. Let me say it again. He was almost... In church. And he remembered how long he was stuck at the gate and on the steps. You do know he was laying on the steps. And if he laying on the step, that means he ain't took steps. So he had to remind himself, I gotta take me some steps called praise and worship. Before I get in there with them church folks and they try to change my praise. So when they opened the doors to the church, he wasn't looking for an invitation. He wasn't looking for the right hand of fellowship. He wasn't looking nobody to bring him to the altar. He wasn't looking for nobody to give him a benediction. He came up in that praise that he calls what they were doing in church to look around and say, ain't that guy right there that we've been passing by? What happened since this morning that now he don't got a praise? Some of y'all, before you get back home, you left one way, but you're going back another. You left with your head down, you're going back with your... Some of you
you how you left your job on Friday. You going back another way tomorrow. Hear me. Final one. Got to get out of here. Got to get out of here. Y'all ready? Can y'all handle this last one? And this is my favorite one. This is my favorite. Y'all ready? First one's called what? It's a step back praise called what? Testimony of what? Praise the Lord. Second one's called what? Step back dance. Okay? Step back praise dance. Okay? What would you think the third one would be called? Step back praise. And wait on God until. Write it down. Step back praise. Dash. Wait on God until. Y'all ready? Which means you come to a place that this particular type of step back praise means. Y'all ready for this? Joshua 6 says this. It deals with the children of Israel after waiting for 40 years in the wilderness that now finally they have gotten over the Jordan and they stand at the Jericho wall. And the instruction or the word given to Joshua by God is this. For six days, we're doing them six steps again. It's the making of man. For six days, each day, circle the walls and wait. First day, they circle the wall. They waited on God until second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day. They circled the wall and waited on God until. Write this down. Write this down. If you don't get nothing else I tell you today, make sure you get this note. The shout will always come before you see the victory. Write that down. The shout will always come before you see the victory. Even though you're standing at victory. Who called that? Shall I repeat it one more time? The shout will always come before you see the manifestation of the victory, even though you're standing at the place of victory. So that's why you don't wait till the battle's over. You shout! I'm close. He said on the seventh day when you have circled the walls like you have did previous six days before shout and God said and then until then I will give you the victory. But they already standing at victory. But the shout ain't came. Some things ain't came down because you wait too late to celebrate. You wait too late to pray. You want to testify when you get it. You got to learn how to testify before you see it. You don't testify your healing and you got it. You testified while you're about to die. You don't wait till you come out the situation before you testify God brought you out. You testify before you come out. He 
says, and when I give you the signal, tell everybody to shout, for I have given you. He did not say, I will. Which means it was yours before the victory. But the shout always come before you see it. I'm trying to get to the last part here. But some of y'all ain't got it. Some of y'all are a shout away. No, you think I'm crazy. You better ask those people in Jericho City that day whether the people of God crazy because they shouted. The reason you ain't got what God promised you because you think it's too crazy. It is crazy. And if it wasn't crazy, it wouldn't be God. Now watch this. I'm closing. I'm closing. When they shout, the walls come down and they have not touched nothing or nobody. So how do the walls come down without touching the enemy while you're still seeing? Because God supernaturally have surrounded what he promised you. And he's waiting till you come in line with it. And you're never going to get what he promised you until you believe you can have it. Watch this. Isaiah 40, 31 says... They that wait on the Lord, he shall. Say it real slow. Isaiah 40, 31 said, they that what? Wait. The third type of step back praise is what? Wait on who? God on what? They that wait on the Lord. He shall renew. What? There we go. Renew. Which means God already know you've been weakened by the pandemic. You've been weakened by 2020. You've been weakened by the storms. But he said if you can wait on me. Until I renew your strength. You shall mount up with wings as an eagle. You shall run and not be weary. I got the clothes now. Ah, but Job, Job, takes a different turn. Job 14, verse 14. Job asks a question. Job said, if a man shall die, shall he rise or live again. Then he paused. It's called say lie. Means to pause and think things over. So Job turns around in the big clause of verse 14. After he just suggested if a man shall die, which Job is talking about himself. He had suffered. He had lost everything. He went through death. His health had went down. Problems in the family. But then Job have a big clause moment in verse 14. After he just suggested, if I shall die, shall I rise? Shall I live again? Then the big clause. He said, but out of all my appointed time, I'm going to wait till my change come. Which means he prophesied and said, it ain't my season to die. 
It ain't my season uh, to go lacking. Uh, I'm going to wait uh, till my change come. Uh, I'm going to take a step back, uh, praise, uh, and wait on God. Uh, and I'm going to wait uh, until uh, I got to go. Uh, the full gospel. Uh, Baptist Fellowship uh, Church in 1996 uh, uh, sung the song. Uh, the song was, uh, Lord, I will. Uh, I'm going to stand uh, until, uh, until you come. Uh, until you come for me uh, out of all uh, my situations. Uh, I'm going to stand until you. Uh, out of my uh, condition, uh, I'm going to stand until you. Uh, out of my circumstance, uh, I'm going to stand uh, until uh, you come. Uh, until you come for me. Uh, and I don't know about you, uh, but I'm going to stand uh, until you. Uh, God, until he comes, until the change comes, out of all I've been through, I've realized never will he leave me, nor will he forsake me, he'll be with me, even to the end, to the end of time, I'm going to stand, sometimes the going get rough, it get mighty tough, but I'm going to stand, Anybody here, you realize you may be going through, but you got to step back, praise, and you're going to wait, you're going to wait, you're going to wait on God until, until he comes, and when the trumpet sound, we'll be heaven by, somebody shout, I will, I will, I will. Stand. You you have to understand. It's in trusting process. Trusting God gives us a requirement to wait. In spite of situation. In spite of our circumstance. The Bible said the man at the pool in John 5 waited for 38 years. Nothing ever happened. Because every time it was his season, he missed it. Because he's waiting on somebody else to help him to do what he should have been waiting on God to do. Did anybody catch what I just said? John chapter 5 talks about a man at the pool of Bethesda. He waits 38 years for something that's been promised. But he keeps missing it because he's waiting on people to help to get him in Many of your problem is you are really waiting on people while you're trying to testify about God. And you'll never enter into your completeness, a fullness of season, while you think God needs people or a man to help you get somewhere he promised. Jesus shows up. He sees a man that been in that situation missed several seasons, 38 years of season, and he asked the man one question, do you want to be healed? The first thing the man can say after 38 years, I have no man to help me when I believe it's my season. How many of you going to keep testifying it's your season, but you keep missing it because you need somebody to help you? Do what God promised you to get into so he can get you out of Let's lift hands and pray. Those that are watching, stretch your hand towards those devices or that screen. Because this is your until. Your until is relinquishing your will for his. Your thoughts for his. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts as far as the heaven is from the earth from our ways. God said, if I send rain and I send snow to water the earth, shall I bring it back? He said, my word that goes out, it cannot return unto me void. It has to now fulfill its accomplishment. See, the problem is God has spoken a word in your life, and you're still trying to send it back to God. <laughs> and you don't know, when God don't tell you to do something, you say, God, I can't do it, God. I can't go through this no more. You're trying to, you're trying to put a stop payment on what it is he wrote for you. <laughs> Ooh, how many called that? Why are you trying to void out what it is 
God told you you can't do because you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. So the next time God tells you to do something, don't remind God what it is you can't do when he told you you can do all things through him. Lift those hands. Lift those hands. So what is it that you can't do that he told you he was going to do and you think you're doing it? That's why you fail. That's why we all fail. Because we try to override what it is he said. Because the shout always comes before the victory. You'll see it. So, Father, we thank you for this word of an assignment, for the exhortation of what it is that you yourself have justified through your own word, through your own power, your own will, your own time, your own season, for the will of us to renew strength back into the body of Christ, the believers, the saints, the people of God that have felt the, the weight of the burden, the weight of the responsibility, the weight of the hurt, the weight of the pain. But thank you for this word. We take a step back and we reflect. And we're reminded. Never will you leave us. Nor will you forsake us. You'll be with us even to the end of the time. We are reminded. We take a step back of praise and we're reminded. You're not a man that you should lie. Neither are you the son of man that you have to repent. If you have not spoken it, shall it not happen? If you have not said it, shall it not come to pass? For Father, you have spoken a word and it cannot be altered. It cannot be changed. It cannot go in reverse. And once you have called and ordained a people to be blessed, to receive the inheritance of you, the abundance of you, you will not override what it is you said because your word cannot return to you empty, unfulfilled. So now bring fulfillment into the life of the believer, the people, the saints. What have felt like unjust or injustice, bring justice. Because you justify those that you qualify. And those that you qualify, you glorify. So thank you for your word, Lord. For this too shall come to pass. And we don't wait to see the victory. We all shot before the victory manifests itself. God bless you. We love you.